During the first hour of our program today, former Israeli ambassador Danny Ayalon was remarkably candid when asked about members of President Obama's campaign team helping the opponents of Prime Minister Netanyahu in the upcoming Israeli elections. The ambassador basically and politely said, butt out. At the risk of drawing this distinction with Danny, actually there is nothing new about American political consultants being involved in Israeli campaigns. Our own Dick Morris has done work there, as has former Clinton confidant James Carville and a whole passel of other politicos. But what is different this time around is that our president and his advisors make no secret of their animus toward Bibi Netanyahu, whether complaining to the French president about the Israeli prime minister in range of an open microphone or excusing himself from a meeting in progress with the PM so that he could go upstairs to a family dinner, Mr. Obama's disdain for Mr. Netanyahu is thinly veiled to say the least. Saying much more on this subject recently, presidential advisor Valerie Jarrett, or perhaps I should say it this way, veteran White House watchers believe that Ms. Jarrett is the anonymous U.S. official quoted in the Times of Israel reacting to the news that Netanyahu had accepted John Boehner's invitation to speak in Congress in March. Quote, we thought we'd seen everything, but BB managed to surprise even us. There are some things you simply don't do. He spat in our face publicly, and that's no way to behave. Netanyahu ought to remember that President Obama has a year and a half left to his presidency, and there will be a price, end quote. Speaking of a price, your tax dollars may be going to the organization politically attacking Netanyahu in the Israeli campaign. And that certainly is a new development, quite apart from the long accepted practice of American consultants being hired to lend a hand in campaigns there. Freebeacon.com reports that the U.S.-based activist group One Voice International received two, count them, two grants from the State Department last year and in fact lists the State Department as a partner on its website. Though a State Department spokesman denies, or I should say uh, one voice spokesman denies that any government funding has been used on those political activities in Israel, you and I both know that money is fungible and that by taking our tax dollars in any fashion or form, one voice is U.S. government funded, at least in part. Now, despite some indigestion at the State Department and the White House, Speaker Boehner was well within his rights to invite Bibi Netanyahu to speak, and the Prime Minister I accept, accepted, I believe, because our president is against any further sanctions on Iran. Another Israeli publication, Haaretz, reports that President Obama telephoned the Prime Minister last week, personally demanding the PM tone down the anti-sanctions rhetoric when appearing before Congress. It's not reported what Netanyahu said in response, but I wouldn't blame him if he used a one-word term for poultry waste, a vulgarity that Team Obama used to describe the PM just a few months ago. Almost 19 years ago, Bibi Netanyahu first served as the Israeli Prime Minister, and despite a polarized political environment in this country at that time, and I should know because I was in the middle of it, there was unanimity behind his first address to a joint session of Congress. Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich, despite some strong disagreements on other issues, presented a united front on foreign policy. In fact, during the speech, the only alienation encountered was focused on yours truly. Let me explain. When Prime Minister Netanyahu began that speech, I was in my office meeting with officials from the Navajo Nation who were then my constituents. Barry Goldwater had advised me that no matter how long the Navajos wanted to meet, you should take as long as they wanted. To do anything else would be considered an insult. So that meeting went on and on until we finally finished up the agenda. Then, when the Navajo leaders departed, I bolted down to the House chamber. The PM was speaking to a joint session, meaning the Senate was also in hand. I entered the chamber as quietly as I could, and to my surprise, saw a, se a vacant seat down front beside Senator John Warner of Virginia. Senator Warner and I share a party affiliation, but really not too much else. So when I went to sit down beside, me, beside him, he looked at me as if I were something the cat drug in. That was the only discordant dote I recall on that day, and it could be classified as Republican on Republican disdain. At least that's the way I see it.